This year at the 2016 Paris Book Fair, Korea was invited as the guest of honor country. And this was in part very importantly to celebrate the 130th anniversary of establishing diplomatic tie between Paris and Seoul. But also, however, we have to recognize as President Olang himself acknowledged at the event, the whole event or invitation was to recognize ever-growing global interest in Korea's literature. So we'll be talking about that today. The rising prominence of Korean literature, as well as the challenge that the writers, as well as the industry, publishing in the industry itself, faces. All coming up right here in this program, up front. Paris Book Fair 2016 was recently held in France. Korea was invited as the guest of honor to commemorate the 130 years of diplomatic ties between Korea and France, and it had the biggest and most eye-catching pavilion during the event. 30 Korean writers from a variety of genres, including fiction, webtoon, and picture book, joined the event. On the autograph events and poetry readings during the fair, visitors from all around the world have shown great interest in Korean literature. Han Gang, writer of The Vegetarian, who has been nominated for the 2016 Man Booker International Prize, one of the world's top three literary awards, also joined the event, and it has also attracted a great attention. Literary value of the Korean literature has been promoted through events like the Global Book Fair, and Korean literature has also strengthened its competitiveness by exporting publication rights to other countries around the world. An increasing number of publishing companies abroad have voluntarily wanted to publish Korean literature. In the past, Korea used to select literary works and asked for publishing companies overseas to publish them. However, along with a rising interest in the Korean literature, we've seen a lot of foreign publishers and translators who have voluntarily wanted to publish and translate Korean literature. Moreover, a lot of foreigners have gathered information and given support for translating and publishing Korean literature in order to promote them to their countries. We had a chance to hear more about it from a managing director of an organization under the Frankfurt Book Fair, one of the biggest book fairs in the world. Yeah, I believe very strongly that Korean literature will make its way somehow because good writers all over the world. They don't write for the market or they don't write for a global market. They write for themselves and if they are lucky, people are interested in what in their writing. And I think that will happen with Korean literature because we are we are living in a global world and we have very similar problems yeah, in different settings. And if a woman writes about like Hong Kong, her problems people will be touched in all other countries as well. I strongly believe in that. The world has shown rising interest in Korean literature. Upfront discusses future direction for Korean literature when it comes to its development as a new content for the Korean wave. For today's discussion, uh, we have a very special guest in the studio, of course. Uh, on my left side here, Professor Emmanuel Pestreich, uh, professor from Gyeonggi University. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And this side, we have Professor Jan Helik Dirks. Uh, he is a professor of European literature and language from Gacheon University. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you for the invitation. Of course, uh, we all understand that one of the key reasons, we have several reasons, such as uh, you know, Paris Book Fair uh, that I mentioned at the opening, and as well as others, but also uh, the novel vegetarian right. and the writer Han Gang. Uh, she has been nominated as a preliminary, preliminary candidates for the uh, Man Booker Award. So all these things are happening all together this year and we are taking notice. So we will we'll have to start with this uh, one key question that is where we stand in terms of Korean literature, in terms of the uh, global recognition and, and global scale. Uh, how can we start Professor Well. Generally speaking, we have to admit that at the moment, 
uh, Korean literature still does not get a lot of attention mm -hmm. outside Korea. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned before, uh, there are quite encouraging signs. Right. Um, but I think on the whole, we have still a long way to go. Mm. And um, yeah, there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, for example, like uh, within uh, East Asia, if you will, right. of course, uh, you have Japan as a very strong country in terms of introducing their literature worldwide. Right. And China, of course, recently they won a Nobel Prize a few years ago. Uh, after Japan and China, what, what are some of the countries that may be competing against Korea? Or Korea is Korea right after that, those two countries? Uh, well, I haven't done research and I don't really it's think about, right. about literature in terms of, of competition per mm. se. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say this, that uh, Korea has been very... Uh, late in terms of introducing its literary tradition as a whole mm. uh, and the overall investment uh, in terms of research, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, promoting uh, literature has only been very recent, really since the late 1990s that mm -hmm. we've seen this, this shift. Uh, moreover... But would you say the mm -hmm. Korea's efforts to introduce the literature itself actually dates back quite a while back though? Uh, no, it, it, it was since 1990s, mostly? Well, it, um, my, my sense, I mean, for example, the mm. first professor of Korean literature in the United States was David McCann oh, okay. at Harvard yeah. University. That mm. would have been 1995 that mm. he was appointed. So mm. it's very recent. Before that, there was not a single professor in an American university who's major. Right. Uh, now, my, my, my field is, is pre-modern uh, literature, and mm. we've had even fewer. Now in the United States, there's only one professor, mm. two professors, I think, who actually have, who are, their field is pre-modern literature. Mm. So it's still uh, relatively small, and this mm. is not insignificant because the reception of a literature is not just about the most popular new uh, author, right. but also the recognition of the tradition, mm. right? Mm. What is the Korean literary tradition? And, and in that respect, I think it's been uh, very, very slow, mm, very see. slow. Uh, in your observation, Professor Jerks, uh, setting aside the uh, world recognition outside and especially you know, the teaching mm -hmm. professor and so on, uh, your observation of Korean literature as it is, your own personal subjective perception of, of it, its competitiveness in comparison with other countries' literature, uh, dom, if you will. Uh, can you talk yes. about its strength? Yes. Okay, if you want to talk in terms of competitiveness... Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about the quality, perhaps. Of, so, about you know, the quality. Then, yeah. yeah, maybe about aspects which may be appealing mm -hmm. to... Which may be potential yeah, for the future yeah, as well. Right? For foreign readers. Mm -hmm. there are, I think there are some aspects of Korean literature which uh, will always be interesting for, mm -hmm. um, for readers all around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, subjects like... Uh, war or separation, mm -hmm. um, social change, mm -hmm. conflicts between um, tradition and modernization, mm -hmm. uh, search for identity mm -hmm. and so on. These are uh, universal human experiences. Right. Uh, these but are Korea yeah. seems to have like a more condensed pack of those uh, very dramatic experiences, right? So, Maybe, so, so we have yes. a, a big pool of subject. And uh, right. That we can use. Okay. And mm -hmm. one thing which is important: these stories mm -hmm. have to be told in a way mm -hmm. that the reader does not uh, does no longer think, "Oh, that's about Korea. That's about Koreans." Uh, but oh, yeah, yeah, that's about humans. Right. That's about me. Mm -hmm. So, and if uh, literature is able to mm -hmm. convey this uh, sort of impression or mm -hmm. uh, of experience, right. it uh, will be successful, I think. Adding to that point, uh, the, the universal appeal of the Korea's favorite subjects uh, right. in its literature, uh, what do you see? Uh, is there a great potential ahead? I, I think it's an extremely important point, the universality, mm. which is to say that Originally, much of the effort in Korean literature has been to present, uh, up until the last 10 years, right. present Korean literature as somehow embodying the unique experience of the Korean people. Mm -hmm. And that this has limited mm -hmm. the potential appeal mm -hmm. because uh, people read literature because it, 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 it represents something for them right. individually. So mm -hmm. I think this is a very positive way uh, to look uh, and present literature. At the same time, mm -hmm. I think that literature as a field mm -hmm. uh, is most successful 
if it, it moves away from some concept of competitiveness or markets, that it, mm. it actually, it's, its value in society right. is an alternative space in mm -hmm. which competition or markets are not the issue, but rather a sort of a residence, a spiritual uh, or a perception mm -hmm. uh, aesthetics, right. that this is really where literature plays its greatest role. We have to be mindful about these, uh, what's happening outside the literary world in talking right. about what's happening inside the literary world. Right. That is, K-pop, K-wave, all these things. Right. Uh, there is an observation or opinion that uh, the rising in interest in Korean uh, popular culture may be actually pooling or, or, uh, or fueling the interest in Korean literature. Do you right. agree with such observation? Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a double-edged sword. On, on the one sense. hand, mm -hmm. uh, the general popularity of, say, K-pop mm -hmm. or webtoons does increase the number of people interested in, in Korean literature, mm. uh, and that that has had a positive effect around the world. I'm in Korea, so I don't know the, the latest in mm. the United States. Uh, on the other hand, hey, K-pop itself has become highly commercialized and very um, sort of ritualistic. Mm. So I, I think that it's in some ways leading people away from much of the qualities about the Korean literary tradition, yeah. which had to do with a certain sort of a a calm perspective mm -hmm. and a, an interest in things other than competitiveness and economics, but mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. in philosophical mm -hmm. and moral ethical issues. So uh, that, that, that for me is the appeal mm -hmm. of the Korean literary tradition is the concern with ethical and moral issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and Less I, of a material side of the life, I suppose. Uh, right? Well, it, it, it's, it's a paradoxical. I mean, yeah. humans are paradoxical. Right, right. So market forces, competitiveness is a reality that I think we have to be aware of, and mm. I, I don't deny that, but that ultimately the victory of literature is not about getting prizes or about being competitive. It's Absolutely. about the ability mm -hmm. to uh, transform the means by which people perceive the world. Right, right. Uh, Professor Dirks, the, uh, what, what they're calling one source, multi-use, uh, as an aspect of Korean literature. We're talking about, you know, those uh, stories or novels that has become, that have become successful movies, such as uh, movies or, or uh, sometimes musicals or, or uh, other things, such as uh, My Sassy Girl, which is more kind of modern mm -hmm. time story, and uh, the Leafy, uh, Hen Into the Wild. Yeah. Uh, one source, multi-use, they say, is one of the Korean strengths in terms of promoting the literature and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, do you see uh, a little bit of difference in, on the Korean side of what's happening here? Well, I think uh, you're probably right. It, mm. And I think that maybe mm -hmm. one way to, uh, uh, to appeal to a larger audience, mm. um, cinema is uh, Korean cinema, Korean movies right. are certainly still more uh, how to say, uh, mm. they get a, more attention mm. than Korean literature right now. Mm. So maybe through this uh, different media, uh, it will be possible to, uh, yeah, to get more attention on mm. the whole. Mm. Um, I'm not really an expert uh, on this matter, but um, to me it seems What about possible. other countries? Uh, you know, I, of course, the United States yeah. is very active in terms of like yeah. movie production. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we can observe, even though Hollywood is pretty mm. strong in terms of commercial side of it rather than literary side of it. Mm. Uh, I guess France is also very strong in terms of connecting the literature to, to uh, the motion pictures and so on. Uh, the, what about the webtoon side? I mean, you know, these days, uh, internet media is so active and right, so on. Right. Is Korea actually leading the overall trend here? What, is, it one of, is Korea one of the countries that leads well, the trend? Well, I, I can give a certain sort of an anecdote. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the webtoon Misang, mm -hmm. uh, which is in Korea. So I, I right. wrote an article on my blog mm -hmm. about a year ago, in which mm -hmm. I introduced the webtoon Misang and I described it in English. It has never been translated into English, I don't right, think. Right. Uh, and I got more hits mm -hmm. for that <laughs> than anything I ever wrote, in fact. Uh, so there's profound interest in mm. Korean contemporary webtoons, mm. and the translation is not keeping up with the global demand. So mm. it's, 
it has enormous potential. Mm. So it's actually it's sort of interesting that uh, that the the uh, Korean translation effort has not kept up with the interest of young people, mm. particularly in their teens and twenties around the world, who are very interested in, in contemporary Korean webtoons. And mm. webtoons are very exciting because Korea has emerged and talk about competitiveness oh, right. very very quickly. I mean, Japan used to be. In completely dominant across the, the, the board in terms yeah. of the manga and mm -hmm. online. Animation. Uh, and now mm -hmm. in the last five, six years, Korea has become extremely uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. powerful. And, mm -hmm. and Misang, for example, is known through the drama, mm -hmm. but increasingly people going from the drama to the webtoon right. and becoming interested in where, where it started originally. So indeed, uh, some people say, and an increasing number of people seem to be saying that it, it may be no longer as meaningful to talk about just mainstream printed novels right. or poems, the traditional literature as, as the literature. Rather, we have to kind of broaden our uh, boundary of understanding right. Right. Uh, the, the literary world to right. include webtoons and right. other means of uh, media here. Uh, do you have some sense in terms of how you compare what's happening in Korea with other parts around the world, particularly country yeah. of your origin or, or the areas, regions of your origin? Yeah. Uh, for example, as far as Germany is concerned, mm -hmm. I would say Germany is far behind. Mm. Uh, it's quite conservative mm -hmm. in some way when it comes to the reception of literature. Mm. For example, um, e-books are still not very popular oh. in Germany and mm. I think it will take some time mm. to uh, uh, yeah to introduce this kind of uh, reception mode in in mm. Germany mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think yeah in this area Korea may be uh, mm -hmm. leading well, what about the the, uh, the genre I don't know what's the proper way of calling it but children's uh, right. picture book or whatever, you know, the, the, the literature. story literature right, right. with pictures mm. and so on. Uh, we understand, uh, do you agree with an observation that Korean mm. uh, side, uh, that genre is pretty uh, active as well? Very strong. Yeah. Very, Very strong. strong. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there are recognitions, just like uh, the one that I mentioned, the, the leafy uh, hand into the wild. It right, has become right. a worldwide yeah. kind of sensation. Yeah. So indeed in Korea, uh, beyond the traditional boundary of the literature, there are all these things happening. So we'll have to kind of include all those within the large boundary, right? Right. Basically. Okay. And, and I would say, particularly this interest in, say, the Nobel Prize for Literature, <laughs> I think tends to distort right. the overall mm -hmm. need. So mm -hmm. children's literature, unconventional mm -hmm. webtoons, mm -hmm. and other, there's many forms of webtoons mm -hmm. and very alternative uh, uh, forms of expression. And then, of course, uh, the pre-modern tradition. So if you focus on Nobel Prize for Literature, it has to be a living author. Mm. So that means you don't translate authors from the 1920s and 30s and mm. 40s. Right. And that may not seem so important to Talk, us. Talking about those uh, uh, living uh, you right. know, writers here, right. uh, tell us a little bit about your own preference here, uh, the, the writers that you're watching. Of course, we have big names like right. Han we right. talked about. Right. Well, who are some of your... Uh, Favorite living writers. <laughs> well, so unfortunately, I'm I'm not a modern literature specialist. Uh, and I mean, for example, uh, uh, Hwang Seok Young. I feel some confidence because I've actually very read, 80s. <laughs> I, I, I've read his works. Right. Whereas contemporary works, I've either seen only in in translation or, mm. or such. So I, I don't feel feel mm. competent to, to to talk about contemporary but literature. Yeah. Um, mm. But uh, my, my observation is mm. obviously I'm seeing much more, and there are many more people who are very qualified to talk mm. on this uh, topic. Mm. Uh, I think uh, I'm at the same time. Uh, uh, concerned right. uh, that it is increasingly, um, you know, a, a marketing mm. uh, operation to market certain people and present them overseas mm -hmm. uh, in cooperation with uh, publishing houses. And I think this is just the wrong direction for literature. Literature mm -hmm. should be about how we perceive the world, how right. we give mm -hmm. opportunities for people, and, and also actually has an ethical content to mm -hmm. it. It's not about markets, it's about an ethical view of the right. world. I think you are covering all the subjects that we are going to talk about oh, I'm sorry. during the remainder of <laughs> yeah, the program here, but, uh, mm, but I like mm. the speed. But going back to the uh, mm. personal mm. observation of mm. the uh, individual mm. uh, artists mm. or writers, mm. uh, 
tell us a little bit, uh, mm. share with mm. us your personal mm. observation of the writers that mm. you're watching with uh, greater mm. interest. Well, I personally, I'm interested in um, authors who uh, belong to the so-called avant-garde, mm. Germany, like, uh, in, in Korea, sorry, mm. uh, like um, Zhang Yang Mun or mm. Pei Sua. Mm -hmm. These are authors I have been translated, mm -hmm. uh, I have been translating mm -hmm. for, for some while. Uh, but um, as far as my professional activities are concerned, mm. for example, at the Literature Translation Institute, right. where I um, uh, teach uh, young students who want to become translators, right. there I try to um, um, provide a broad spectrum of mm -hmm. modern and contemporary mm. uh, authors, um, especially the younger generation, mm -hmm. such as uh, mm. Uh, Yi Gi Ho or oh. Song Sok Jae, mm -hmm. uh, right. very, mm -hmm. uh, very humorous uh, right. authors, or maybe Pang uh, uh, Min Kyu, who is mm. a very original writer, mm. or uh, Eun Yi Kyung, Kim Min Sok. Uh, Long list of uh, yeah, uh, many, though. many. There are right. many, many mm. writers, uh, um, and uh, I think it's exactly this diversity mm. uh, which. Uh, which is uh, interesting in it. And, uh, and these yeah. writers that mm. you're mentioning, uh, try to, uh, as we try to help our uh, viewers yeah. who are joining from all around the world, uh, let's uh, try to use some of the analogy. Would you agree that, for example, the well-known, very famous writer from Japan, uh, Murakami Haruki, for instance, he's, he's a very cosmopolitan in terms of his taste, subject matters, yeah. and so on, as we mentioned before. Like, mm. it, it's not, what he deals with is not necessarily totally about Japan, but he deals with all this mm. very universal subject. Would you say these writers that you just mentioned, uh, the contemporary writers in Korea, they're the ones also who are doing this kind of cosmopolitan approach to, to life yeah. and subject as a whole? Uh, of course, they do not deny their Korean roots, mm. uh, but they are able to transcend it mm. in some way mm. and uh, to take a more yeah, global perspective. Right, right. Uh, so I think this ability is very important if you uh, want to be recognized on mm. the global stage. Right. And talk about one of the authors who are getting a uh, rep big reputation, positive reviews overseas. The person that we've uh, mentioned several times, Han Gang, Han Gang the yeah. nominee for the uh, Man Booker Award. Uh, in, uh, we'll have a brief uh, interview, a video piece here, uh, with an expert who can actually uh, you know, make a comment on what it means uh, to have Han Gang being nominated for this pre prestigious award and what it means not only for herself but about the Korea's literary world. Let's take a look at the, this interview and then we'll be back right after that. The book written by a writer, Han Gang, has been nominated for the 2016 Man Booker International Prize, and it has a creative story that hasn't been seen for a few years. The Korean literature has been gaining a lot of popularity among the readers from all around the world. In the past, foreigners didn't show a great interest in the Korean literature unless we actively promote and publish them to the global literary market. However, increasing number of foreign publishers, especially from the UK, the US, and other European countries, have shown a great interest in the Korean literature and have voluntarily shown their will to publish our literary works. That is quite a huge change in the global status of the Korean literature. Quality of the content is the most important factor, and the creativity of the writer can also contribute to improving the quality of the content. The role of publisher and agent is also important. They should prepare for a strategy to actively advance into overseas markets by promoting the literary value and competitiveness of the Korean literature. And of course, the translation is one of the most important factors. So we should also put a lot of effort to find competent translators. The Korean literature can successfully advance into overseas markets when literary works, publication and marketing strategies are all linked together and create a synergy effect.
As literature is a content that people read and enjoy, it lingers in people's mind for a longer period of time in comparison to other cultural contents. So it can be spread more slowly than other contents of Korean wave. However, as the Korean literature has been globalized in a steady manner, it is expected to bring about a positive impact for a long time in the near future. This is the strength of book, and also the reason why we can expect to see a bright future in the Korean literature. Okay, now we're back, and uh, let's get back to one subject that uh, our professor, uh, Pastor Reich, seems to uh, prefer, the awards. Oh, you, mentioned, yes. you mentioned Nobel uh, Prize and so on, right. but overall, uh, in a bigger picture here, uh, some people say winning these kind of big prizes could actually help uh, right. further generate interest for Korean uh, literature, and the others say, no, 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 actually, uh, with the greater interest in Korean literature, right. these uh, awards may uh, materialize. Uh, mm. You know, it may be a trivial question, but for some Koreans, it may be an important question. Right. In your observation, what's the main uh, flow of causality here? How does it um, work? So it's an extremely important point, and mm -hmm. I think we have to come back, say, in the case of the United States, mm -hmm. not awards is, in a way, the final result, uh, but the main concern for me in the United States is, in American universities, how many positions are there mm -hmm. to teach Korean literature, how many students have a chance to take literature as mm -hmm. undergraduates and be trained, you right. know, to eventually become translators themselves. In the case of America, there are very relatively few positions in mm -hmm. Korean literature. Right. And there's only one, uh, two positions in the entire country in pre-modern. Mm -hmm. So that, that may not seem relevant to winning a Nobel Prize, but in fact... But if in, you, in a sense, you know, award and the teaching positions themselves seem to really directly uh, reflect the overall demand on the side of the consumer of the Korean literature, doesn't it? Um, that? So if you don't have Korean literature introduced yeah. as part of world literature, mm -hmm. undergraduate courses, mm -hmm. then people are simply unaware right. uh, of the existence of, of Korean. It's not even, not even an option that they're aware of. And mm -hmm. they come across it, of course, online, mm -hmm. through webtoons, other things that come. That, that's, of course, positive. Right, right. But I think if you're looking for a long-term strategy for introducing Korean literature mm. uh, abroad, mm. then maybe the most essential thing is to get pieces of Korean literature mm. in uh, the textbooks for world culture in right. high schools, mm -hmm. in colleges, mm -hmm. in elementary schools right. around the world. And that, that, that part, I think, we've tended to sort of focus on the prize, yeah. you know, as opposed to the issue of, of how Korean literature appears in world literature textbooks for high school students, for example. On that point, we have to go back to one uh, point. I'm not going back to, but mm -hmm. we have to make a reference to a recent New Yorker column right. about <laughs> Korea's mm -hmm. preoccupation with uh, Nobel uh, Award right. in Literature. Right. Right. Uh, this. So let's uh, have a, a little bit of discussion on that. Some people say, in order for Korea to actually win this award, Korea right. will have to just, just forget about the award right. for a while. Right. And uh, some people say, uh, of course, we have this huge, such a huge pool of uh, great talents, and Korea has been just uh, totally focusing on <laughs> the poet Gon for too long. And there are a lot of the, all these kind of discussions. So what's your observation on this? Yeah, yeah I think... Um, Nobel Prize is okay, <laughs> but yeah, let's not that's get it. emotional. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's okay. Right. But uh, as uh, Professor Pastrash already said, uh -huh. there are so many uh, issues which are much more important right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, such an award can help maybe to get some more attention. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't really, I think it, it's, uh, it won't hurt, mm -hmm. but... Uh, <laughs> In the case of the Nobel Prize, take the case of Graham Greene, very famous British author. He never got a Nobel Prize. Uh, this is back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, and most people came to the conclusion that not giving Graham Greene the Nobel Prize because the Nobel Committee didn't like his <clears throat> politics and what he said hurt the Nobel Prize. It didn't hurt Graham Greene. Uh, the overall, uh, for Korean literature to move further ahead, what are some of the uh, problems and challenges to overcome here? Some people say the overall publication industry may be a problem, overall 
uh, the trends in the market right. is a problem. Some people are saying language is a problem. Right. Uh, Professor Pestreich, uh, from your experience of publishing books here, right. uh, even beyond the, the literary world, right. Uh, right. What, what do you see? What are the, some of the challenges and problems? Well, the, the greatest challenge, I think, is that the humanities in Korean society mm -hmm. uh, have been so uh, uh, degraded over the last few years so that there are no longer teaching positions in the humanities. Students don't major in humanities. Would you say that trend has been in place for the past several decades, but especially for the past several years, right. do we see some rising recognition to reverse the trend, though? Uh, there may be, mm -hmm. uh, and there are alternative approaches, but mm -hmm. uh, the general trend for young Koreans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Future novelists, right? Mm -hmm. Future Korean authors, mm -hmm. is that increasingly people are not majoring in literature, uh, or literary fields, mm -hmm. and they're majoring in business because they don't think they can get a job otherwise. So this, to me, that's the most fundamental issue because translation is, of course, very important. But if you don't have people in the next generation mm -hmm. writing literature, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, translation isn't really going to help. This is very important. So mm -hmm. we need to check with a different perspective, potentially mm -hmm. different perspective. In terms of like pipeline of talents, mm -hmm. Right. that are coming into the literature. Do you see the dwindling trend as Professor Pesreich argues? Or do you see something else? The way I see it, as mm -hmm. there is a greater emphasis on the commercialized part of the world, right. I see more Koreans, actually, Korean youngsters, getting interested in saying, forget about that part. We want to live on our lives right. and, and getting more independent and getting seriously into this literary an artistic world. Uh, which side are you on in terms of your <laughs> observation? <laughs> but, uh, I think, yeah, they are both sides. Mm. Right. Uh, so, um, yeah, but um, uh, speaking positively, mm. uh, I also, yeah, uh, um, see off mainstream movement, mm. uh, which is very uh, encouraging. Mm. There are mm. many young authors who are not afraid uh, to try uh, things out, mm. uh, to do some crazy stuff mm. very uh, without, yeah, mm. very experimental. Mm. And um, I think uh, there's a big potential. Are these yeah. these artists that you call the writers in avant-garde tradition? S some of them, space? yeah, okay. go, uh, mm. uh, also choose this direction. Mm. And of course, they do not, uh, um, have too many readers mm, right now, mm. in, not in Korea and not abroad. Mm. But um, uh, I think we have to uh, put the, uh, we have to, uh, no, it's, it's about quality first, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they uh, don't, don't uh, care about their The popular sex, appeal. Uh, yeah, too uh, much. Professor yeah. Uh, uh, there's, I think you touched upon a very important point here because I've heard some Korean literary mm. uh, critics saying that these artists in Korean literature these days, they're trying too much of weird stuff and that mm -hmm. actually uh, acts to <coughs> reduce the, the size of audience. You know, there, there are some serious artists in Korean literature. Uh, they're, they're very good, but they don't really... Uh, get to the heart of the ordinary people because they're just simply too weird and too out of mainstream mm. or strange. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, are their art, art, uh, their art itself kind of hurting the, the overall growth of the popular interest in themselves? No, I think we need all of them. Mm. We need mm. a, a broad diversity of, uh, of, of styles mm -hmm. and of uh, approaches and uh, uh, subjects and uh, individual personalities mm -hmm. and uh, everything which uh, uh, strives for one single mainstream mm -hmm. uh, could mm -hmm. be uh, harmful to the right. development of literature as mm -hmm. a whole. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, uh, you know, we have a uh, person overseas, an expert about Korean literature, who actually runs his website to introduce Korea's literature to the world. And so we will uh, have a uh, satellite connection with this expert, uh, Mr. Charles Montgomery. And uh, let's ask him a few questions here, if possible. OK, Mr. Montgomery, are you online? OK. OK, yeah. yes. Right. Uh, we have a few questions for you, since you're running this very famous website to introduce Korean literature. 
Uh, first of all, of course, the obvious question is how you got to uh, run this operation. What made you interested in Korean literature at the beginning? Well, I think several things are at play here. I think first is it took longer than it should have, but the rest of the world has become aware that Korea is a major player everywhere, right? So once that awareness hit, people started to think about Korea in a way that they didn't before. Prior to the last maybe five to 10 years, people either thought of North Korea or they thought of, a, in the US particularly, they thought of the television show MASH, which was cited in Korea, but was an entirely unrealistic portrayal of modern Korea. So you had things like Hallyu and the movies, Old Boy and Host and movies like that, that just opened the consciousness of people. And once the consciousness of people was opened about Korea, of course the people who are interested in literature were going to start to go, wait, why have I never heard of Korean literature? Right now, I feel as though Korean literature is at the beginning of a sort of a perfect storm. You're starting to see authors break through, like Han Gang, uh, Kim Yong-ha, even older authors like uh, uh, Lee Moon-yo are still popular. And so you're just starting to see this thing. Korea just has become, in some ways, too important to ignore. And the literature is a brilliant window on Korean culture. So if you want to learn Korean culture and you're not into reading textbooks, Korean literature is a beautiful way to introduce yourself to the culture. Of course, we're having this interview because the in, uh, your interest on your website has been considerable. But overall, can you tell us uh, the overall level of uh, reaction and uh, the responses you've been getting from the readers of your website? Yeah, this is a really interesting thing that happened. When I first started the website, about 50 percent, I was getting maybe 80 page views a day, very small, and 50 percent from Korea. Over time, that number has grown by a hundred times or something like that. I'm very bad at math. And now the Korean viewers are 20% or less of the viewers, which means that what's happening is the site is now attracting many, many more viewers and they're international in nature. They're from the United States, they're from the UK, they're from the Philippines. I think at one time I counted 140 countries in one month hitting that site. And then again, the other sites, there's Tony's site in Australia and Philip's site in the UK are also getting similar kind of hits now. It's just starting to get out there. And as the last question, a uh, big question here, uh, what do you see in terms of the potential for Korean literature in terms of its further growth and also perhaps any problems and challenges you may see in terms of seeking uh, this long-term growth? I think it's inevitable and I think it's underway. I think that um, historically it was very, very difficult. I mean, I think LTI Korea has been around for almost 20 years and it had a very difficult task at the beginning. But now all of the things I mentioned at the beginning of the interview, all of these things are coming together. Interest in Korean culture, better translators in Korea, better understanding of what works will make sense in English, better relationships with publishers in English. So I would almost say that not a whole lot new needs to be done. What needs to happen is Korea just needs to continue and Korean government, Korean authors, Korean agents just need to continue on the path that they've already been on. And it's more or less inevitable because Korean, again, Korean culture is becoming more and more interesting to the entire world. And Korean literature is an extraordinary way to understand Korean culture and also like any literature, and this should be obvious, but it wasn't obvious to people 15 years ago, 20 years ago, like any national literature, some of it is really, really good. Okay, thank you, Mr. Montgomery, for your great uh, interview.
we have just seen, before we did so, also a uh, video about what's happening in Paris, in terms of Paris Book Fair. And right. we have our backdrop here that's right. been changed uh, to show what's happening in Paris so far. Uh, that, I'm saying that because we want to talk about overall the different culture and translation here. I mean, right. Paris in French right. language. Of course, we've been thinking a lot about in English and so on. Right. Uh, but uh, it's happening in French and other right. languages as well. And uh, Professor Dirk, you have uh, won award, uh, Daesan uh, Literary Award in translation. Overall, uh, what do you see in terms of translating Korean literature into the language? Uh, the, by the way, you got the award in your translation into English? Into German. And German? No, not into English, in, only in into German. German. Okay. Yeah. In terms of your experience of uh, translating Korean, liter Korean literature into your own native language, what were some of the problems and challenges? Well, each challenge depends on the mm -hmm. author, it mm -hmm. depends on the uh, individual work, right. and on the style, and so on. So challenge may be different from time to time. You're saying but uh, perhaps the style of individual uh, writer could actually give you a different challenge than, than other Of Korean. course, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe one of the problems we had in the past, because uh, if you read uh, translations of German uh, of Korean literature into German mm -hmm. uh, from maybe 20 years ago, mm -hmm. they seem to be almost Flat. as if they were read, written by the same author. <laughs> it's, uh, we do not have right, any, right. any mm, stylistic mm. characteristics. Right, right. And yeah, it's it's flat. It's, it's sort of way. like a cooking, right? You, you you want to have the flavor right, or the right. scent yeah. alive of Very individual true. writers, right. but but doing that as a translator, it will be the key, most important challenge. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so I think it's very important mm. for translators to concentrate mm -hmm. on the authors mm -hmm. they personally are interested in, mm -hmm. they feel connected with, mm -hmm. and they. Uh, um, uh, because the author, uh, the translator has to become the voice mm -hmm. of the author. Mm -hmm. author. So, how, how do mm. you do that? By write, uh, reading a lot of these particular authors' writing? Is that how you get to know the author? Of course you have to read a lot. Mm. And uh, it can also be helpful to meet with uh, the Did author. You? Did yeah. you actually meet with yeah, the and, uh, it, It's much different if you know him or her personally. Ah. Um, you know what kind of mentality is behind all, all the uh, literary fascinating, uh, fascinating. Oh, so it, yeah, I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the you know, Professor Pesreich, uh, there mm -hmm. are increasing number of uh, foreigners right. who actually learn Korean language right. and then become translators. Right, right. Before in the past in Korea, right, the Koreans who learn foreign language. Often they worked as a team with the, the writer in that native uh, country of a native language where they want right, to introduce right. literature as a, as a team, right? Joint team. Right. Now we have foreigners right. who are translating this into their own native language. Uh, why so? Uh, what difference does it make? I mean, also uh, another big question in the minds of Korean people would be: Isn't it really difficult to learn Korean language to become a competent uh, translator? Well, I, I think obviously it's a positive step mm -hmm. that there are more non-native speakers who mm -hmm. are learning Korean and can translate. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to talk about real issue of, of introducing Korean literature, yeah. I think you have to make an analogy to someone like uh, uh, David Hawkes, the translator of the story of the stone in, in uh, into English, Chinese novel into, mm -hmm. into English. Mm -hmm. So here is a, a great scholar who read extremely broadly in the entire Chinese literary tradition, mm -hmm. who knew 18th century uh, British and French novels extremely well, mm -hmm. and who wrote extremely complex sort of translation of this great Chinese work, mm -hmm. The Story of the Stone, The Dream of the Red Chamber. Mm -hmm. um, and my personal opinion, looking around, I'm not an expert, is I don't see uh, translators at that level of sophistication who yeah. know the mm -hmm. entire Korean literary tradition mm -hmm. from you know from the 17th century to the present mm -hmm. who are have a high proficiency both in Korean language mm -hmm. and in their own native tradition mm -hmm. because you're right. always making analogies if you translate something you know from uh, Korean literature into English mm -hmm. you're making analogies to sort of uh, um, 
writers in, in English, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you're not aware of it. So how well, how broadly you're read in your own native uh, literary tradition mm. and in the entire Korean literature tradition is extremely important. Mm. And I hope in the future that we can get people who have that sort of breadth of understanding of literature. That then leads me to another question that mm -hmm. is like a success of uh, uh, you know, literature in terms of like a, you know, uh, spreading the literature worldwide uh, right. from Japan or China, right? Japan has uh, famous uh, writers such as uh, whom I mentioned already, uh, Murakami Haruki or right. the, some of the big award winners like uh, Kawabata Yasunari or right. Oe Genzaburo and right. so on. And China also, we had a Moen recently. Uh, were their stories translated by these people who have all this broad perspective of historical views and so on? Or were they translated, do we know, I mean, maybe, maybe you don't know, but what's your guess in terms of how these uh, big pieces uh, of work being translated from East Asian language to, to overseas? How does it get done, do we know? Well, probably there were able translators, mm. uh, translators who did their job well, because otherwise uh, the impression of the text mm. is um, not convincing. Mm -hmm. it, it may be, the content may be completely correct, but if you don't get some kind of feeling mm -hmm. what is actually behind all that, mm -hmm. well, it, yeah. Can I say something? Because yeah. I, yeah. I know this field. Uh, than, so than in the case either. of Murakami yeah. Haruki, one of his major, he has three people who've translated his works, but yeah. his, the one major translator is Jay Rubin, who was mm -hmm. a professor yeah. at Harvard University for many years. Mm -hmm. And Jay Rubin is originally, uh, his field was 13th century classical <laughs> Japanese literature. So mm -hmm. he knows the Japanese tradition very well. He knows the language very well. Uh, and he's extremely proficient and he reads all the time. So I think he has an extremely broad understanding of the Japanese tradition, even though he's actually focusing on the work. In the case of Yasunari Kawabata, mm -hmm. uh, was translated by Seidensticker, the mm -hmm. famous professor of Japanese literature mm -hmm. uh, at Columbia, mm -hmm. who also had read very broadly in the tradition, mm -hmm. uh, and also McClellan, who was professor at Yale. Uh, and both of these professors, I think, had a profound stylistic understanding of English literature. Not, mm. not Japanese, yeah. I mean, they knew right. Japanese literature well, right. but they were stylist mm. in their own language. And that that, I think, is a very mm. critical mm. point that we should not, we should not mm. miss. Mm -hmm. It's not merely command of the, the language. Right. It's not merely your marketing okay. ability, but okay. it's your stylistic mm. ability to mm. find analogies mm. in your own tradition that are parallel to what you see in the Korean tradition. Uh, overall, Professor Pesterich, uh, going beyond the literature here, yes. the point that we are talking about, the further growth of Korea's broadly defined right. literary right. world. Right. What are some of the points that we should keep in mind, uh, including webtoons and other means right. of media? So there are I think there are two main uh, points. Mm -hmm. One is the issue of new emerging mm -hmm. uh, forms of literature beyond the traditional novel and that Korea is on the cutting edge in some respects in terms of a broad range of means of expressing oneself in a literary manner, mm -hmm. uh, which goes, in fact, the traditional novel is, is in the past. So we need to keep up with these changes. At the same time, I think we also have to recognize that for literature to be successful, mm. uh, you need people who are sort of immersed in that culture and in their own culture, mm -hmm. right? That they have the, 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 the translator is a bridge, right? right? right. Uh, and has to have a foot in each side mm. to create uh, analogies and create something uh, meaningful. Mm. And I personally think that although it is very real that mm -hmm. you have to think in terms of markets and competitiveness, that the actual act of translation and literary composition should never be seen in terms of some sort of global competitiveness because it's essentially a, a subjective uh, mediation right. uh, involving the past. Right. Even for authors that we don't think of, say contemporary authors, we think they're, they're separated from mm -hmm. the classical tradition or mm -hmm. from the authors of the 1920s or 1930s, right. but I would suggest that the expressions they use, mm -hmm. even if they're not aware of it, Absolutely. come from that tradition. Right, right, right. So in that sense, you know, some of the recent successes that we are talking about, Korean literature being introduced overseas, may be a result of luck or a great uh, fortune that these Korean uh, writers, novelists right. mostly, have 
met or come in to meet uh, the, you know, the, the competent trans translators, including mm. yourself, of course, yeah. you know, to Germany. <laughs> and some of those writers who <coughs> gain uh, popularity and fame, Shin kyung Su, Kim young ah Han Gang, right. uh, they just uh, newly, I suppose, came to encounter very competent translators, right. whether they have full perspective about right. Korean, right. Uh, full right. history of li literature or not. I, I guess that would be the result. Yeah, mm. well, I think these successes are not really predictable. Mm -hmm. We can create an environment where things like that may happen, mm -hmm. um, but that's it. Mm -hmm. um, there's another example of uh, some kind of surprising su success of Korean literature in mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. uh, Jong Yoo Jong, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Seven yeah. Nights of Darkness. Interesting story. Um, yeah. Germans are extremely interested in crime thrillers and detective <laughs> right. stories, right. Right, right. which is a, a genre that, what is not, uh, what, which doesn't have a long tradition in, in Korean literature, actually. Right, right. It's something new. Yeah, right. um, but uh, as soon as this uh, novel came out in mm. Germany, mm. it got a lot of attention and it uh, got great uh, reviews mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, quite amazing, mm. but uh, was not really predictable. Interesting. In that sense, uh, would you say uh, writers like Sang Sok Jae who seem to have more like a comic approach to the stories yeah. and stuff may be more popular in France? I don't know about France, uh, the preference there, but uh, the, or avant-garde writers would be more uh, popular in France perhaps? German observation maybe, of France. <laughs> maybe. Well, actually I thought the book I have translated would, uh, be, uh -huh. would have some appeal to German readers didn't have any at all. I see, I see, I see. So we can so never we, predict the future no, here. No, not okay, really. Okay. Well, it's like the, the, the parable of the sower, right? You, mm -hmm. you sow the seeds, mm -hmm. but you cannot know which, which yeah, will sprout right. and where they will yeah. sprout. Right, right, exactly. So I guess that gets to our overall point that we've been discussing here today. Uh, we have uh, seen great success of Korean literature mm -hmm. so far. Uh, especially in recent years, but in terms of how we're going to go ahead, it all depends on so many different variables uh, right. here right. and factors. And what we are hoping is just uh, the great uh, artistic minds of Korea will continue to blossom so that it will provide mm -hmm. foundation from right. which we will need, of course, on top of we will need all this cooperation from overseas with greater talents coming in and, and so on. So in that sense, uh, professors, uh, we have learned so much from your wonderful discussion today. So in that sense, we have to thank you big time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And we, of course, thank our viewers who have joined from all around the world uh, to our discussion. And I hope we, you greatly enjoyed our discussion as, as much as I did. And for the same reason, of course, I have to ask you to come back to our program next time when we discuss these kind of issues and matters for Korea as well as the world. Until then, goodbye.